and rocks and doors and maidens bleach their summer smocks. Oh, go, go, that war against your own affections and the huge army of the world's desires. Our late edict shall strongly stand in force. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academy, still and contemplative in living art. You three, Baron, Dumaine and Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. Your oaths are passed. Now subscribe your names, that his own hand may strike his honor down, that violates the smallest branch herein. If you are armed to do as sworn to do, subscribe to your deep oath, and keep it too. I am resolved. Tis but a three years fast. The mind shall banquet, though the body pine. Fat paunches have lean pates, and dainty bits make rich the ribs, but bankrupt quite the wits. My loving lord, Dumaine is mortified. The grosser manner of these world's delights he throws upon the gross world's baser slaves. To love, to wealth, to pomp I pine and die, with all these living in philosophy. I can but say they are protestations over. So much, dear liege, I have already sworn, that is to live and study here three years. But there are other strict observances, as not to see a woman in that term, which I hope well is not enrolled there and one day in a week to touch no food, and but one meal on every day beside, the which I hope is not enrolled there. And then to sleep but three hours in the night, and not be seen to wink of all the day, when I was wont to think no harm all night, and make a dark night too of half the day, which I hope well is not enrolled there. Oh, these are barren tasks, too hard to keep. Not to see ladies, study, fast, not sleep. Well, your oath is passed to pass away from thee. Let me say no, my liege, and if you please, I only swore to study with your grace and stay here in your court for three years' space. You swore to that, Barone, and to the rest. By yea and nay, sir, then I swore in jest. Why, all delights are vain, but that most vain, which with pain purchased that inherit pain, as painfully to pour upon a book to seek the light of truth. Study me how to please the eye indeed by fixing it upon a fairer eye, who dazzling so that eye shall be his heed and give him light that it was blinded by. Studies like the heaven's glorious sun that will not be deep searched with saucy looks. Small have continual plodders ever won, save base authority from others' books. These earthly godfathers of heaven's lights that give a name to every fixed star have no more profit of their shining nights than those that walk and what not what they are. Well, sit you out. Go home, Baron. Adieu. No, my good lord, I have sworn to stay with you, and though I have for barbarism spoke more than for that angel knowledge, you can say, yet confident, I'll keep what I have sworn and by the penance of each three years' day. Give me the paper, let me read the same, and to the strictest decrees I'll write my name. How well this yielding rescues thee from shame. Ah. Item, if any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. Ah. This article, my liege, yourself must break, for well you know here comes an embassy the French king's daughter with yourself to speak. Therefore, this article is made in vain, or vainly comes the admired princess hither. Oh, well, what say you, lords? Why, this was quite forgotten. Yes. So study evermore is overshot. While it does study to have what it would, it doth forget to do the things it should. And when it hath the thing it hunteth most, tis one as towns with fire, so one, so lost. We must have forced dispense with this decree. She must lie here on mere necessity. Mm, necessity will make us all forsworn 3,000 times within this three years' space. For every man with his effects is born, not by night mastered, but by special grace. If I break faith, this word shall speak for me. I am forsworn on mere necessity. So to the laws at large I write my name, and he that breaks them in the least degree stands in attainder of eternal shame. Suggestions are to others as to me, but I believe, although I seem so loath, I am the last that will last keep his oath. Ah. But uh, is there no quick recreation? Aye, that there is. Our court, you know, is haunted with a refined traveller of Spain. A man in all the world's new fashion planted, 
that hath a mint of phrases in his brain. <laughs> One who the music of his own vain tongue doth ravish like enchanting harmony. <laughs> <laughs> a man who is a most illustrious wight, a man of far new words, fashion's own light. Cost of the swain and he shall be our sport. And so to study, three years, tis but short. Which is the Duke's own person? This fellow, what would? I myself reprehend his own person, for I'm his grace's father. And I would see his own person in flesh and blood. This is he. Oh, uh, senior arm, arm, command you. There's villainy abroad. This letter will tell you more. Sir, the contempt that offer is touching me. A letter from the magnificent Armada? The matter is to me, sir, as concerning Jack Lanetter. The manner of it is, I was taken with the manner. In what manner? In manner and form following, sir. All those things. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting with her upon the farm, and taken following her into the park, which put together is in manner and form following. <laughs> now, sir, for the manner, it is the manner of man to speak to a woman. For the form, in some form. For the following, sir? As it shall follow in my correction. And God defend the road. Oh, will you hear this letter with attention? <laughs> As we would hear an oracle. Such is the simplicity of man to hearken after the flesh. Great deputy, the Welkin's vice regent and sole dominator of Navarre, my soul's earth's god and anybody's fostering patron. <laughs> Not a word of coster yet. So it is. It may be so, but if he says it is so, he is in telling you. But so, so. Now, peace. Be to me and every man that there is not fight. No words. Of other men's secrets, I beseech you. Peace. So it is, besieged with sable-coloured melancholy, I did commend the black oppressing humour to the most wholesome physic of thy life-giving air, and, as I am a gentleman, betook myself to walk. The time when, about the sixth hour, when beasts most graze, birds best peck, and men sit down to that nourishment which is called supper. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the time when, now for the ground which, which I mean I walked upon it, is he clapped thy park, then for the place where, where I mean I did encounter that obscene and most preposterous event that draweth from my snow-white pen the ebon-coloured ink, which here thou viewest, beholdest, surveyest, or seest, <laughs> but to the place where. It stands north northeast and by east from the west corner of thy curious knotted garden. <laughs> there did I see that low spirited swain, that base minion of thy mirth, Me? that unlettered small knowing soul, Me? that shallow vassal, still me, which as I remember height costard. Oh, Sorted and consorted, contrary to thy established proclaimed edict and continent canon, with, with, oh, with. But with this I passion to say wherewith. With a when? With a child of our grandmother Eve, a female. <laughs> or for thy more sweet understanding, a woman. <laughs> Which I, as my ever-esteemed duty pricks me on, have sent to thee to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet grace's officer, Anthony Dow, a man of good repute, carriage bearing an estimation. May and shall please you. I am Anthony Dow. <laughs> For Jack Quinetta, so is the weaker vessel called, which I apprehended with the aforesaid swain, I keep here as a vessel of thy law's fury, and shall at the least of thy sweet notice bring her to trial. Thine in all compliments of devoted and heart-burning heat of duty, Don Adriano de Armado. <laughs> <laughs> this is not so well as I looked for, but the best that ever I heard. <laughs> the best from the worst. <laughs> but, sir, what say you to this? Uh, sir, I confess the wench. Did you hear the proclamation? I do confess much of the hearing it, but little of the marking of it. It was proclaimed a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. I was taken with none, sir. I was taken with a damsel. Well, it was proclaimed damsel. Ah, oh, this was no damsel, neither, sir. She was a, a virgin. Oh, oh. It is so very too, for it was proclaimed virgin. Well, if it were, I deny her virginity. I was taken with a maid. This maid will not serve your turn, sir. This maid will serve my turn, sir. Sir, I will pronounce your sentence. You shall fast a week with bran and water. Oh, I'd rather pray a month with mutton and porridge. And Don Amado shall be your keeper. Good constable, see him delivered all. And go, we lords, to put in practice that which each to other hath so strongly sworn. Ah. I lay my 
my head to any good man's hat, these oaths and laws will prove an idle scorn. Cuckoo. Senor Armado! Sir! The Duke's pleasure is that you keep Custard safe. And you must suffer him to take no delight nor no penance, but he must fast three days a week. For this damsel, I must keep her at the park. She is allowed for the day woman. Are you well? I do betray myself with blushing. <laughs> Maid. Mom. I will visit thee at the lodge. That's your body. I know where it is situated. Oh, Lord, how wise you are. I will tell thee wonders. With that face. I love thee. Well, so I heard you say. And so, farewell. Fair weather after you. Come, Jack and Anna, away. <laughs> Villain, thou shalt pass to thy offences ere thou be pardoned. Well, sir, I hope when I do it, I shall do it on a full stomach. Thou shalt be heavily punished. I'm more bad for you than your fellow, for they are but lightly rewarded. Take away this villain. Shut him up. Come, you transgressing slave, away. Oh, let me not be penned up, sir. I will fast being loose. No, sir, that will fast their loose. Oh. Thou shalt to prison. Well, if ever I do see the merry days of desolation that I have seen, some shall see. What shall some see? Nay, nothing, Master Mark, but what they look upon. It is not for prisoners to be too silent in their words, and therefore I will say nothing. I thank God I have as little patience as another man, and therefore I can be quiet. The Princess of France arrives in Navarre with her ladies, Rosaline, Catherine, and Mariah. Who are the lords that are vow fellows with this virtuous duke? Longueville is one. Know you the man? Of sovereign parts he is esteemed, well fitted in arts, glorious in arms. Nothing becomes him ill that he would well. The only soil of his fair virtue's glass is a sharp whip matched with too blunt a will. Some merry mocking lord belike is so. They say so most, but most his humours know. Such short-lived wits do wither as they grow. Who are the rest? The young Dumaine, a well-accomplished youth, of all that virtue loved for virtue loved. Most far to do most harm, least knowing you. For he hath wit to make an ill shape good and shape to win grace, though he had no wit. I saw him at the Duke Alonson's once, and much too little of that good I saw is my report to his great worthiness. Another of these students at that time was there with him, if I've heard the truth. Biron, they call him. <laughs> but a merrier man within the limit of becoming mirth, I never spent an hour's talk with all. God bless <laughs> my ladies. Are they all in love, that every one her own has garnished with such bedecking ornaments of praise? Here comes Boyette. Now, what admittance, Lord? Navarre had notice of your fair approach, and he and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Mary, thus much I have learnt. He rather means to lodge you in the field, oh, like one that comes here to besiege his court, than seek a dispensation for his oath to let you enter his unpeopled house. Oh. Here comes Navarre. Fair princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. Fair, I give you back again, and welcome I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide fields, too base to be mine. You shall be welcome, madam, to my court. I will be welcome, then. Conduct me thither. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. hear me, dear lady. I, um, I have sworn an oath. Ah, oh, lady, help my lord. He'll be forsworn. <laughs> For the world, fair madam, by my will. My will shall break it. Will and nothing else. Well, your ladyship is ignorant what it is. Were well, my lord so, his ignorance were wise, where now his knowledge must prove ignorance. I hear your grace hath sworn out housekeeping. It is deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold to teach a teacher ill beseemeth me. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my coming and suddenly resolve me in my suit. Madam, I, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner that I were away, for you will prove perjured if you make me stay. Meantime, receive such welcome at my hand as honour, without breach of honour, may make tender of to thy true worthiness. You may not come, fair princess, in my gates, but here without, you shall be so received as you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbour in my house. 
Your own good thoughts excuse me and uh, farewell. Tomorrow shall we visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort your grace. Thy own wish, wish I thee in every place. Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? Did not I dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? Uh, you must not be so quick. It is long of you that spur me with such questions. Your wit's too hot, it speeds too fast, with time. Not till it leaves the rider in the mire. Uh, what time of day? The hour that fools should ask. Now fair befall your mask. Fair fall the face it covers. And send you many lovers. Amen. So you be man. Nay. Then will I be gone. <laughs> um, um, what's her name in the cap? Uh, Rosaline, by good hap. Is she wedded or no? To her will, sir, or so. You are welcome, sir. Adieu. Farewell to me, sir, and welcome to you. Sir, I pray your word. What lady is that same? The heir of Alençon, Catherine, her name. A gallant lady. <laughs> Monsieur, fare you well. Uh, uh, I beseech you a word. Hmm? Uh, what is she in the white? A woman sometimes, and you saw her in the light. Mm -hmm. A chance light in the light. I desire her name. She hath but one for herself. To desire that were a shame. Pray you, sir, whose daughter? Her mother, I have heard. God's blessing on your beard. Oh, good sir, have you not offended? She is an heir of Falconbridge. Nay, my colour is ended. She's a most sweet lady. Not unlike, sir. <laughs> that may be. <laughs> Armado sends Moth, his page, to fetch Custard. Boy, fetch hither the swain. He must carry me a letter. Go. As swift as lead, sir. The meaning, pretty ingenious, is not lead a metal heavy, dull and slow. You are too swift, sir, to say so. Is that lead slow, which is fired from a gun? Oh, sweet smoke of rhetoric. He reputes me a cannon, the bullet, that's he. I shoot thee at the swain. Thank then, and I flee. A most acute juvenile, voluble and free of grace. <sighs> By thy favour, sweet Wilkin, I must sigh in thy face. Most rude, melancholy, valour gives thee place. <laughs> My herald is returned. A wonder, master. Here's a costard broken in a ship. Sirrah costard? Mm -hmm. I will enfranchise thee. Oh, marry me to one Francis. I smell some goose in this. By my sweet soul, I mean setting thee at liberty, in freedoming thy person. Eh? Thou wert immured, restrained, captivated, bound. True, true. And now you will be my purgation and let me loose. I give thee thy liberty, set thee from durance, oh. and in you thereof impose on thee nothing but this. Mm -hmm. Bear this letter to the country maid Jacquinetta. There is remuneration. For the best ward of mine honour is rewarding my dependence. Moth! Follow! Now I will look to his remuneration. Remuneration? Oh, that's the Latin word for three farthings. Three farthings? Remuneration. What's the price of this egg? Oh, one penny? No, I'll give you a remuneration. <laughs> Why, it carries it. Remuneration. Why, it is a fairer name than a French crown. I will never buy and sell out of this word. Uh, uh, my good name, Costa. Exceedingly well met. Pray you, sir, how much coronation ribbon may a man buy for a remuneration? Uh, what is a remuneration? Mary, sir, half penny farthing. Why, then, three farthings worth of silk. Ah, thank you, worship. God be with you. Uh, uh, stay, slave. Mm. I must employ thee, as thou wilt win my favour, good my name. I'll entreat. Uh, when have you have it done, sir? This afternoon. Well, I will do it, sir. There you are. Uh, uh, thou knowest not what it is. I shall know, sir, when I have done it. Why, villain, thou must know first. Well, I will come to your worship tomorrow morning. It must be done this afternoon. Park slave, it is but this. Mm -hmm. The princess comes to hunt here in the park, and in her train there is a gentle lady. When tongues speak sweetly, then they name her name, and Rosaline they call her. Uh, ask for her. And to her white hands, see thou do commend this sealed up council. There's thy guerdon, go. Ah. Oh, sweet guy. Better than remuneration, eleven farthing better. Most sweet guy. Oh, you will do it, sir, in print. Garden. Remuneration. 
And I, forsooth in love, I that have been love's whip, a very beetle to a humorous sigh, a critic, nay, a night watch constable, a domineering pedant or the boy, than whom no mortal so magnificent, this wimple, whining, purblind, wayward boy, this senior, junior, giant, dwarf, Dan Cupid, regent of love rhymes, lord of folded arms, the anointed sovereign of sighs and groans, liege of all loiterers and malcontents, dread prince of plackets, king of codpieces, sole imperator and great general of trotting paritos. Oh, my little heart. And I to be a corporal of his field and wear his colours like a tumbler's hoop. What I, I love, I sue, I seek a wife. A woman that is like a German clock, still at appearing ever out of frame and never going aright, being a watch, being watched that it may still go right. Nay, to be perjured, which is worst of all. And among three, to love the worst of all. A whitely wanton with a velvet brow with two pitch balls stuck in her face for eyes. Aye, and by heaven, one that will do the deed, though Argus were her eunuch and her guard. And I, to sigh for her, to watch for her, to pray for her. Go to, it is a plague that Cupid would impose for my neglect of his almighty dreadful little might. Oh, well, I will love, write, sigh, pray, sue, and groan. Some men must love my lady. <coughs> and some Joan. Cuckoo. <coughs> Here comes a member of the Commonwealth. Oh, dig you, General. Pray you, which is the head lady? Well, thou shalt know her fellow by the rest, but have no heads. <laughs> uh, which is the greatest lady, the highest? The thickest and the tallest. The thickest and the tallest? <laughs> it is so, truth is truth. And your waist, mistress, were as slender as my wit. One of these maid's girdles for your waist should be fit. <laughs> Are not you the chief woman? You are the thickest ear. What's your will, sir? What's your will? I have a letter from Monsieur Baron to one Lady Rosalind. Oh, thy letter, thy letter. He's a good friend of mine. Stand aside, good bearer. Boyet, you can carve. Break up this capon. I am bound, sir. But this letter is mistook. It importeth none here. It is written to Jacquinetta. We will read it, I swear. Break the neck of the wax and everyone give ear. By heaven that thou art fair is most infallible, true that thou art beauteous, truth itself that thou art lovely. More fairer than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself, have commiseration on thy heroical vassal. <laughs> the magnanimous and most illustrate King Cofetua set eye upon the penurious and injubitate beggar Xenelophon, and he it was that might rightly say, Vedi vidi vici, which to anatomize in the vulgar, oh, base and obscure vulgar, Videla said, he came, saw, and overcame. He came one, saw two, overcame three. <laughs> Who came? The king. Why did he come? To see. Why did he see? To overcome. To whom came he? To the beggar. What saw he? The beggar. Who overcame he? The beggar. <laughs> the conclusion is victory. On whose side? The king's. The captive is enriched. On whose side? The beggar's. The catastrophe is a nuptial. On whose side? The king's? No. On both in one or one in both. I am the king, for so stands the comparison. Thou the beggar, for so witnesseth thy lowliness. Shall I command thy love? I may. Shall I enforce thy love? I could. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. What shall thou exchange for rags? Robes. For titles? Titles. <laughs> for thyself? Me. Thus expecting thy reply, I profane my lips on thy foot, my eyes on thy picture, and my heart on thy every part. <laughs> Lying in the dearest design of industry, Don Adriano de Amado. What plume of feathers is he that indicted this letter? What vain, what weathercock. Did you ever hear better? I am much deceived, but I remember the style. Else your memory is bad, going o'er it erewhile. This Amado is a Spaniard that keeps here in court, a fantasime, a monarcho, and one that makes sports to the prince and his bookmates. Thou fellow, a word. Hmm? Who gave me this letter? I told you, my lord. To whom shouldst thou give it? 
From my lord to my lady. From which lord to which lady? From my lord Birone, a good master of mine, to a lady of France that he called Rosaline. Thou has mistaken his letter. Come, ladies, away. Here, Rosaline, put up this letter. It will be thine another day. Jaconetta and Costard call on Holofernes, a schoolmaster. God give you good morrow, master schoolmaster. Mm-hmm. Be so good as to read me this letter. It was given me by Custard and sent me from Don Armado. Oh, I beseech you, read it. If love make me forsworn, how shall I swear to love? I never faith could hold if not to beauty vowed. Though to myself forsworn, to thee I'll faithful prove. Well done, it is that tongue that well can thee command. All ignorant that soul that sees thee without wonder. Mm. Which is to me some praise that I thy parts admire. Thy eye, Jove's lightning bears, thy voice's dreadful thunder, which not to anger bent is music and sweet fire. Celestial as thou art, O oh, pardon love this wrong, that singes heaven's praise with such an earthly tongue. But demoiselle a virgin, was this directed to you? Aye, sir, from one Monsieur Barone, one of the strange queen's lords. I will ever glance the superscript. To the snow-white hand of the most beauteous lady, Rosaline. I will look again on the intellect of the letter for the nomination of the party, writing to the person written unto. Your ladyship's in all desired employment, Barone. Ah, this Barone is one of the votaries with the king, and here he hath framed a letter to a sequent of the stranger queens, which accidentally, or by the way of progression, hath miscarried. Trip and go, my sweet. Deliver this paper into the royal hand of the king. It may concern much. Stay not thy compliment. I forgive thy duty. Adieu. Coster, go with me. Uh Sir, God save your life. Have with thee, my girl. No. wanders the forest with his love poems to Rosaline. The king is hunting the deer. I am coursing myself. I will not love. If I do hang me, faith, I will not. Oh, but her eye. By this light, but for her eyes, I would not love her. Yes, for her two eyes. Well, I do nothing in the world but lie and lie in my throat. By heaven, I do love, and it has taught me to rhyme and to be melancholy, and here is part of my rhyme, and here my melancholy. Oh, well, she hath one of my sonnets already. The clown bore it, the fool sent it, and the lady hath it. Sweet clown, sweeter fool, sweetest lady. By the world, I would not care a pin if the other three were in. Here comes the king with the paper. I'll climb this tree, and I'll hide. God give him grace to groan. Oh, I am me. Shot by heaven. Proceed, sweet Cupid. Thou hast thumped him with thy bird belt under the left pap. He faith secrets. So sweet to kiss the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops upon the roads as thy eye beams when their fresh rays have smote the night of dew that on my cheeks down flows. Ah, nor shines the moon one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep as doth thy face through tears of mine give light. Thou shinest in every tear that I do weep. No drop but as a coach doth carry thee. Hmm. So ridest thou triumphing in my woe. Do but behold the tears that swell in me, and they thy glory through my grief will show. O queen of queens, how far dost thou excel? No thought can think, nor tongue of mortal Oh, how shall she know my grief? Ah, I'll drop the paper. Sweet leaves, shade folly. Wizzy comes here. What? Longer feel in reading. Listen, ear. I fear these stubborn lines lack power to move. <clears throat> oh, sweet Maria, 
Empress of my love. Ooh. Now, these numbers will I tear and write in prose. Oh, rhymes are guards on wanton Cupid's hose, disfigure not his shop. Now, this same shall go. <clears throat> Did not the heavenly rhetoric of thine eye, against whom the world cannot hold argument, persuade my heart to this false perjury? Well, vows for thee broke deserve not punishment. A woman I forswore, but I will prove, thou being a goddess, I forswore not thee. My vow was earthly, thou a heavenly love. Thy grace being gained, cured all disgrace in me. Vows are but breath, and breath of vapour is. Then thou, fair sun, which on my earth dost shine, exhalest this vapour thou, in thee it is, if broken, then, it is no fault of mine. If by me broke, what fool is not so wise to lose an oath, to win a paradise? This is the liver vein which makes flesh a deity, a green goose, a goddess, pure, pure idolatry. God amend us, God amend, we are much out of the way. Mm, and by whom shall I send this? Ah, company. Stay. All hid, all hid, an old infant play. Like a demigod here sit I in the sky, and wretched fool secrets heedfully or I. More sacks to the milk. Heavens, I have my wish, Dubain transformed. Four woodcocks in a dish. Once more, I'll read the ode that I have writ. Once more, I'll mark how love can vary with. On a day, alack the day, love whose month is ever May, spied a blossom passing fair, playing in the wanton air. Through the velvet leaves, the wind, all unseen, can passage find. But the lover, sick to death, wished himself the heaven's breath. Ere, quoth he, thy cheeks may blow, ere would I might triumph so. But alack, my hand is sworn near to pluck thee from thy thorn. Vow, alack, for youth unmeet, youth so apt to pluck a sweet. Do not call it sin in me that I am forsworn for thee. Thou, for whom e'en Jove would swear Juno but an Ethiop were, and deny himself for Jove, turning mortal for thy love. Ooh. This will I send, and something else more plain, that shall express my true love's fasting pain. Oh, would the king Berone and Longerville were lovers too? Ill to example ill would from my forehead wipe a perjured note. For none offend where all alike do do. Do me! Huh? Ah. Thy love is far from charity that in love's grief desire of society. <laughs> ah! You may look pale, but I should blush, I know, to be o'erheard and take a nap in <laughs> so. Come, sir, you blood. Oh. Oh. As is your case is such, you chide at him offending twice as much. You do not love Maria. Longerville did never sonnet for her sake compile, nor never lay his wreathed arms athwart his loving bosom to keep down his heart. Oh, I have been closely shrouded in this bush, and marked you both, and for you both did blush. I heard your guilty rhymes, observed your fashion, saw sighs reap from you, noted well your passion. I me says one old oh, Joe, the other cries. One her hairs were gold, crystal the other's eyes. You would for paradise break faith and troth, and Joe for your love would infringe an oath. What will Barone say when that he shall hear faith so infringed, which such zeal did swear? How he will scorn, how he will spend his wit, how he will triumph, leap and laugh at it. For all the wealth that ever I did see, I would not have him know so much by me. Now step I forth to whip hypocrisy. What? Oh. Ah, good my liege, I pray thee, pardon me. Good heart, what grace hast thou thus to reprove these worms for loving that art most in love? Ah. Your eyes do make no coaches, in your tears there is no certain princess that appears. You will not be perjured, is a hateful thing. Touch none but minstrels like of sonneting, but are you not ashamed? Nay, are you not all three of you to be thus much or shot? Oh, what a scene of foolery have I seen, of sighs, of groans, of sorrow and of teen. Oh, me, with what strict patience have I sat to see a king transform into a gnat. Where lies thy grief, oh, tell me, good humane? And gentle Longerville, where lies thy pain? And where my leeches, all about the breast? Some physic, oh! Too bitter is thy jest. Are we betrayed thus to thy overview? Not you to me, but I betrayed by you. I that am honest, I that hold a sin to break the vow I am engaged in. 
I am betrayed by keeping company with moon-like men. What? Men of inconstancy. When shall you see me write a thing in rhyme, or groan for Joan, or spend a minute's time in pruning me? When shall you hear that I will praise a hand, a foot, a face, an eye, a gait, a state, a brow, a breast, a waist, a leg, a limb? Soft, a... whither away so fast, a true man or a thief that gallant sir? I post from love, good lover, let me go. Oh, God bless the king! Good. What present has thou then? Some certain treason. What makes treason here? No, it makes nothing, sir. Well, if it mark nothing neither, the treason and you go in peace away together. Oh, I beseech your grace, let this letter be read. Our schoolmaster misdoubts it. Twas treason, he said. Oh, Baran, read it over. Where hadst thou it? Of Costa. Well, where hadst thou it? Of Don Adramadio. Don Adramadio. Oh, uh, what's uh, in you? Why dost thou tear it? That's a toy, my liege, a toy. Your grace needs not to think. It did move him to passion, and therefore let's hear it. It is Verone's writing, and here is his name. Ah, you horse and loggerhead, you are born to do me shame. Oh, oh, oh. oh, guilty, my lord, guilty. I confess, I confess. What? That you three fools lack me, fool, to make up the mess. He, he, and you, and you, my liege, and I, are pick purses in love, and we deserve to die. Ah. <laughs> oh, dismiss this audience, and I shall tell you more. Now the number is even. True, true, we are four. Will these turtles be gone? Ed says away. Walk aside, the true folk, oh. and let the traitors stay. <laughs> 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 now to plain dealing. Lay these gloses by. Shall we resolve to woo these girls of France? Aye, and win them too. Therefore, let us devise some entertainment for them in their tent. First from the park, let us conduct them thither. Then homeward, every man attach the hand of his fair mistress. In the afternoon, we will with some strange pastime solace them, such as the shortness of the time can shape, for revels, dances, masks, and merry hours, for run fair love, strewing her way with flowers. <laughs> away, away, no time shall be omitted that will be time, and may by us be fitted. Hello, hello. <laughs> so cockle reef no corn, and justice always whirls in equal measure. Light wenches may prove plagues to men forsworn, if so our copper buys no better treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Boyette. And mirth is in his face. Oh, I am stabbed with laughter. Where's her grace? Fine news, Boyette. Prepare, madam, prepare. Arm, wenches, arm. Encounters mounted on against your peace. Love doth approach, disguised. <laughs> ah, men in arguments, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Muster your wits, stand in your own defence, or hide your heads like cowards and fly hence. St. Dennis to St. Cupid. What are they that charge their breath against us? Say, scout, say. Under the cool shade of a sycamore, I thought to close my eyes some half an hour. But lo, to interrupt my purposed rest, toward that shade I might behold addressed the king and his companions. Warily, I stole into a neighbour thicket by, and overheard what you shall overhear, that by and by, disguised, they will be here. Dear. What? But what? Come they to visit us? They do, they do, and not apparelled thus, like Muscovites or Russians, as I get. <laughs> Their purpose is to parley, court and dance, and every one his love suit will advance unto his several mistress, which <gasps> they'll know by favour several which they did bestow. And will they so? The gallant shall be tasked. For ladies, we will every one be masked, uh, and not a man of them shall have the grace, despite of suit, to see a lady's face. <laughs> Hold, Rosaline, this favour thou shalt wear, and then the king will court thee for his dear. Oh, <laughs> take thou this, my sweet, and give me thine. So shall Baron take me for Rosaline. And change your favours too. Oh. <laughs> so shall your loves woo contrary, deceived by these removes. <laughs> The trumpet sounds be masked, the mask has come. Speak, Rosaline. Uh, what would these strangers know their minds, Boyette? If they do speak our language, tis our will that some plain man recount their purposes. Know what they would. What would you with the princess? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. <laughs> What would they say they? Nothing but peace and gentle visitation. Why, that they have, and bid them so be gone. She says you have it, and you may be gone. See to her she hath measured many miles to tread a measure with her on this grass. 
They say that they have measured many a mile to tread a measure with you on this grass. It is not so. Ask them, how many inches is in one mile? If they have measured many, the measure then of one is easily told. Yeah. If to come hither you have measured miles and many miles, the princess bids you tell how many inches doth fill up one mile. Hmm? Tell her we measure them by weary steps. Hmm. Uh, she hears herself. How many weary steps of many weary miles you have all gone unnumbered in the travel of one mile? We number nothing that we spend for you. Our duty is so rich, so infinite, that we may do it still without account. Thou safe to show the sunshine of your face, that we, like savages, may worship it. Ah, my face is but a moon and clouded, too. Blessed are clouds to do as such clouds do. Thou safe bright moon, and these thy stars to shine, those clouds removed upon our watery eyes. Ah, vain petitioner, beg a greater matter. Thou now requests but moonshine in the water. The inner measure do but vouchsafe one change. What well, thou bids me beg. This begging is not strange. Play music, then. Nay, you must do it soon. Not yet. No dance. Just change, I like the moon. Do you not dance? How come you thus is trained? You took the moon at fall, but now she's changed. Yet still she is the moon and I the man. The music plays, vouchsafe some motion to it. Our oh, ears vouchsafe it. But your legs should do it. Oh, since you are strangers and come here by chance, we'll not be nice. Take hands. Ah. <laughs> we will not dance. Oh, they take the hands, then. Only to part friends. Curtsy, sweethearts, and so the measure ends. Oh, <laughs> what measure of this measure be the price? We can afford no more at such a price. Price you yourselves. What buys your company? Your absence only. Oh, that can never be. Then cannot we be bought, and so adieu twice to your visor and half once to you. Not one word more, my maids. Break off, break off. By heaven, all dry beaten with pure scoff. Farewell, men, benches. You have simple vigor. Twenty adieus, my frozen muscovies. And <laughs> <laughs> he's the breed of wit, so wonder that. This poor oh. Biron was out of countenance quite. Oh, they were all in lamentable cases. The king was weeping right for a good word. Biron did swear himself out of all suit. But Dumaine was at my service, and his sword. Oh. No point, quoth I. My servant's strength was needed. <laughs> Lord Longerville said I came o'er his heart. And trow you what he called me? Quam, perhaps. Yes, in good faith. Go, sickness as thou art. But will you hear? The king is my love sworn. And quick, their own have plighted faith to me. And Longerville was for my service born. You mean is mine, as sure as bark on tree. <laughs> Madam and pretty mistresses, give ear. Immediately they will again be here in their own shapes. For it can never be they will digest this harsh indignity. Will they return? They will, they will, God knows. And leap for joy, though they are lame with blows. Therefore, change favours. Hmm? And when they repair, blow like sweet roses in this summer air. Let us complain to them what fools were here, disguised <laughs> like muscovites in shapeless gear, <laughs> and wonder what they were, and to what end their shallow shows and prologue vilely penned, and their rough carriage so <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> should be presented at our tent to us. Ladies, withdraw. The gallants are at hand. Whip to our tents as rows run all the land. <laughs> Ah, uh, fair sir, God save you. Where's the princess? Gone to her tent. Please that your majesty command me any service to her thither. Well, that she might save me audience for one word. I will. And so will she, I know, my lord. All hail, sweet madam, and fair time of day. We come to visit you and purpose now to lead you to our court. Vouchsafe safe it then. This field shall hold me, and so hold your vow. Nor God nor I delights in perjured men. Oh, rebuke me not for that which you provoke. The virtue of your eye must break my oath. You nickname virtue. Vice, you should have spoke. For virtue's office never breaks men's troth. Now, by my maiden honour, yet as pure as the unsullied lily, I protest a world of torments, though I should endure, I would not yield to be your house's guest. So much I hate a breaking cause to be of heavenly oaths, vowed with integrity. Oh, you have lived in desolation here, unseen, unvisited, much to our shame. Not so, my lord. It is not so, I swear. We have had pastimes here and pleasant games. A mess of Russians left us but of late. How, madam? Russians? Aye, in truth, my lord. Trim gallants, full of courtship and of state. Ah, madam, speak true. It is not so, my lord. My lady, to the manner of the days, in courtesy gives undeserving praise. 
We four, indeed, confronted were with four in Russian habit. Here they stayed an hour and talked a pace, and in that hour, my lord, they did not bless us with one happy word. Oh, I dare not call them fools, but this, I think, when they are thirsty, fools would fain have drink. This jest is dry to me. My gentle sweet, your wit makes wise things foolish and rich things but poor. Which of the wizards was it that you wore? Uh, uh, well, when, uh, what wizard? Uh, why demand you this? There, then, that wizard. That superfluous case that hid the worse and showed the better face. We were described. They'll mock us now downright. Let us confess and turn it to a jest. Amazed, my lord. Why looks your highness sad? Help! Hold his brow. He'll swoon. Why look you pale? Oh, seasick, I think, coming from Muscovy. <laughs> oh, thus pour the stars down plague for perjury. Can any face of brass hold longer out? Here stand I, lady, dart thy skill at me, bruise me with scorn, confound me with a flout, thrust thy sharp wit quite through my ignorance, cut me to pieces with thy keen conceit, and I will wish thee never more to dance, nor never more in Russian habit wait. Oh, never will I trust to speeches penned, nor to the motion of a schoolboy's tongue, nor never come in visit to my friend, nor woo in rhyme like a blind harper song, taffeta phrases, silken terms precise, three-piled hyperboles. Spruce affectation, figures pedantical. These summer flies have blown me full of maggot ostentation. I do forswear them. And I here protest by this white glove, how white the hand, God knows. Henceforth, my wooing mind shall be expressed in russet yeas and honest cursy noes. And to begin, wench, oh, oh so God help me, la. My love to thee is sound, sans crack or flaw. Sans sans, I pray. Uh, yet I have a trick of the old rage. Bear with me. I am sick. I'll leave it by degrees. Um, soft, let us see. I see the trick on Here was a consent, knowing the forehand of our merriment, to dash it like a Christmas comedy. <laughs> some carry tale, some please man, some sight zany, some mumble news, some trench and night, some dick that smiles his cheek in years and knows the trick to make my lady laugh when she's disposed, told our intents before. Which once disclosed, the ladies did change favours, and then we, following the sign, wooed but the sign of she. Now to our perjury, to add more terror, we are a Again forsworn in will and error. Who <laughs> oh, merrily have this brave managed this career to run? Lo, he's tilting straight. Peace, I have done. <laughs> God save you, madam. Welcome, Mercady. But that thou interruptst our merriment. I am sorry, madam. For the news I bring is heavy in my tongue. The king, your father... Dead for my life. Even so. Oh. My tale is told. Oh. How fares your majesty? Boyet, prepare. I will away tonight. Madam, not so. I do beseech you stay. Prepare, I say. I thank you, gracious lords, for all your fair endeavours and entreat out of a new sad soul that you vouchsafe in your rich wisdom to excuse or hide the liberal opposition of our spirits if over boldly we have borne ourselves in the converse of breath. Your gentleness was guilty of it. Farewell, worthy lord. A heavy heart bears not a nimble tongue. Oh, though the morning brow of progeny forbid the smiling courtesy of love, Yet, since love's argument was first on foot, let not the cloud of sorrow dust lit from what it purposed, since to wail friends lost is not by much so wholesome profitable as to rejoice at friends but newly found. I understand you not. My griefs are double. Now, at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your loves. A time, methinks, too short to make a world without end bargaining. No, no, my lord. Your grace is perjured much, full of dear guiltiness. And therefore, this. If for my love, as there is no such cause you will do aught, this shall you do for me. Your oath I will not trust. But go with speed to some forlorn and naked hermitage, remote from all the pleasures of the world. There stay until the twelve celestial signs have brought about the annual reckoning. If this 
austere, insociable life. Change not your offer made in heat of blood. If frosts and fasts, hard lodging and thin weeds, nip not the gaudy blossoms of your love, but that it bear this trial and last love. Then, at the expiration of the year, come challenge me. Challenge by these deserts, and by this virgin palm now kissing thine, I will be thine. Until that instant, shut my woeful self up in a mourning house, raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my father's death. If this thou do deny, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. If this... Or more than this I would deny, to flatter up these powers of mine with rest, the sudden hand of death close up mine eye. Hence, Hermit, then, my heart is in thy breast. But what to me, my love? But what to me? A wife? A beard, fair health, and honesty. With threefold love, I wish you all these three. Oh, shall I say? I thank you, gentle wife. Not so, my lord. A twelve month and a day, I'll mark no words that smooth-faced wooers say. Come when the king doth to my lady come. Then if I have much love, I'll give you some. I'll serve thee true and faithfully till then. Yet swear not, lest ye be forsworn again. What says Mariah? At the twelve month's end, I'll change my black gown for a faithful friend. I'll stay with patience, but the time is long. The like of you. Few taller are so young. Studies, my lady. Mistress, look on me. Behold the window of my heart, mine eye. What humble suit attends thy answer there? Impose some service on me for thy love. Oft have I heard of you, my lord Baron, before I saw you. And the world's large tongue proclaims you for a man replete with mocks, full of comparisons and wounding flouts, which you on all estates will execute that lie within the mercy of your wit. To weed this wormwood from your fruitful brain, and therewithal to win me, if you please, without the which I am not to be won, you shall, this twelve-month term, from day to day, visit the speechless sick, and still converse with groaning wretches, and your task shall be, with all the fierce endeavour of your wit, to enforce the painted impotent to smile. To move wild laughter in the throat of death? It cannot be, it is impossible. Mirth cannot move a soul in agony. Why? That's the way to choke a jibing spirit whose influence is begot of that loose grace which shallow laughing hearers give to fools. A jest's prosperity lies in the ear of him that hears it, never in the tongue of him that makes it. Then, if sickly ears, deft with the clamours of their own dear groans, will hear your idle scorns, continue then, and I will have you and that fault withal. But if they will not, throw away that spirit, and I shall find you empty of that fault, right joyful of your reformation. A twelve month. Well, befall what will befall, I'll just a twelve month in a hospital. Aye, sweet my lord, and so I take my leave. Oh, no, madam, we will bring you on your way. Our wooing doth not end like an old play. Jack hath got Jill. These ladies' courtesy might well have made our sport a comedy. Come, sir, it wants a twelve month and a day, and then twill end. That's too long for a play. When icicles hang by the wall And Dicker Shepherd blows his name And Tom bears logs into the hall And milk comes frozen home in pain When blood is nipped and ways be foul The nightly sings a staring out A merry note While greasy John doth kill the pot When all aloud the wind doth blow And coughing drums a parson's song And birds 
sit brooding in the snow, and Marion's nose looks red and raw. When roasted crabs hiss in the bowl, then nightly sings a staring owl. To woo, to wit, to woo, a merry note, while greasy Joan doth kill the 